What's going on guys? My name is Arrow and today I'm bringing you a video guide for the best bosser that I have ever played. Guys, if you like this sort of content, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps. Let's get into it. All right, let's start by talking about the main mechanics of the build. How does this function? It's all centered around the Iron Commander Death Bow. This bow gives Siege Ballistas per dex that you have. So the higher dexterity you have, the more totems you can spawn. It also gives physical damage to attacks per dexterity. Now the normal version of this build in Leagues Past got most of its damage from this source. We'd convert this to cold damage and you just get a ton of damage from your dexterity on top of spawning somewhere between 18 and 25 ballistas. However, there's another way that came about this league to stack dexterity and that is these boots. So recombinators can give special mods sometimes. I think it's something like one in 50 in order to get one of these special mods. And the one on boots that's relevant for this build is adds two to four cold damage to attacks per 10 dexterity. This mod just about doubles our damage from what we were capable of in previous leagues. In a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to craft these, but for now, I'm gonna go through the rest of the gear. We get decks pretty much wherever we can. Implicits on rings is really nice. Uh, and then I just essence crafted this. It's not great, but it's got a lot of dexterity. Same thing with this ring, percent decks on the base and then flat decks and some resistances in life on the uh, explicits. Uh, these ring bases were about seven exalts at the time of recording. No guarantees if they stay that way. Best in slot until you have a hundred exalts to spend, and I'm not exaggerating, is Astramentus. This amulet gives us so much dex that it's really, really hard to compete until you have a percent dex, percent attributes, and damage per dex amulet, which in my opinion is not worth getting. There's so much damage on this build, you won't even know the difference. As you can see against that Uber Cirrus fight, we took him from 75% to 25% where he auto phased in less than a second. Next we have Heary's Demise, which gives us cold damage to attacks per 10 dexterity, another way we stack flat damage. Uh, you can get all sorts of good implicits on this. I wouldn't recommend spending too much on like an extra arrow or anything. It's not a huge amount of damage for how much it actually will cost you. The belt, another very mediocre item that I crafted. I got the percent dex uh, implicit, which I used catalyst to get to 18%. And then I just spam some deafening essences of dexterity onto the belt, just like the rings and hit some life and resistances. And we called it a day. Uh, these gloves, a really nice mod, is 3% increased damage per 100 dexterity. These gloves are competitive with getting flat decks and percent decks on hunter gloves, but in my opinion, the intimidate and the percent damage per dex is not only easier to acquire, but it's way cheaper and it's competitive. So um, I went with these gloves. I converted some fizz to cold because that gives us more damage. Uh, we scale cold, cold more than fizz. So I recommend that. The Fractal Thoughts, um, percent dexterity, which is nice. Crit multi, 
and uh, a little bit of LE damage and life as well. Just a stat stacking helmet. This was less than an X with the Siege Ballista enchant on it. Again, no promises about cost, but that's what it cost at the time of recording. For your flasks, when you're bossing, you can have very specific bossing flasks. Um, I actually recorded a lot of the footage in the video not using the flasks that I have here. They weren't quite this good. They weren't rolled with effect. But increased effect on your flask is going to give you a bunch more damage. And most bosses and invitations are going to be dead before your flasks run out. So you might as well use the increased effect. So Bottle Faith, huge damage. Uh, Dying Sun with increased effect. This actually gives us three projectiles, which is massive damage. Onslaught, uh, we don't get this anywhere else. There are sources um, to get it for totems. But I chose not to go with the cluster just because it was easier and cheaper. So increased effect with attack speed, again, bunch of damage. And then a huge crit flask, bunch of damage, increased effect, etc. We have this life flask. We probably don't need it. Uh, we could probably put more damage there, but I actually am thinking about taking this build in a slightly different direction later on just to see um, if I can drop the damage down to maybe around 70 million and make it really tanky. I just want to try it. So um, we're eventually going to swap these flasks out, maybe put a mage blood in. We're going to mess with it. We're going to have some fun. But for now, I want to present the build as is in its state, which if you can get frenzy charges up before the boss dies, can get up to 150 million damage. 150 million. Now, you probably can't get frenzy charges up because we use frenzy to hit the bosses, the actual frenzy gem. And the odds that you're going to be able to hit the boss four times to get the four frenzy charges that we have access to before he dies or she dies is almost 0%. So I don't even have Frenzy on right now on this build. I'm just using Ensnaring Arrow. Something that I haven't done yet that that will be good is getting a Wild Wrap that has plus two or plus one and then a 21 gem because when you get to level 22 Siege Ballista, you actually get an extra totem. So that's a nice damage boost, but Wild Wrap, incredible chest. The super, super end game version of this would have a attack speed per 25 dex chest that you can get from grasping the males. Again, you don't need it. This build has so much damage. It's so stupid already. But if you really want to min max, I would go that route. Um, and then you could get things like life, percent life, etc. cetera. Um, but Wild Wrap with plus two on it is incredible. Now, you can map with this build. All you have to do is swap out Barrage for GMP and it clears full screens. Um, it's not fast, but you can map with it. I did map a bit. Um, I did pay for some leveling carries because I was really anxious to get to this, this to the end game and boss with it, but um, you can map with it. I would probably swap out these flasks for something like a Quicksilver, et cetera, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to do that. All right, let's talk about Hierophant. The reason that we go Hierophant is this node right here. 5% more damage per summon totem. When you get to 20 totems, that's 100% more damage from one line, from one ascendancy point. It is, in my opinion, probably the strongest ascendancy point in any build in the entire game. It's absolutely incredible. It also gives us, again, assuming 20 totems uh, for simple math, it gives us 10% of mana per second regen, which solves our entire mana problem. Um, I'll sh real quick, I'll show you the first couple of manas, the first couple totems we cast are not great because we don't have totems up yet to regen our mana. But once we are 18 uh, totems, you can just spam and spam and spam and our regen is absolutely insane. So the third line, you and your totems regenerate 1% of life per second for each summon totem. So not only does this give your totems 20% of life regen, which makes them borderline immortal, but you have 20% of life regen. And that makes your lack of defenses really, really nice. Between that and uh, an instant life flask, you can anything that doesn't kill you, you can recover from. All right, let's talk about the rest of the tree. Uh, very straightforward. You want to just get as much dex as you possibly can. There are a lot of fun ways to do that. Fluid motion is really nice at the start. Take some life. We get Mage Bane because 
we have so much dexterity that this insta caps us. And then we're not going to be using our uh, dexterity anyway for evasion because we take iron reflexes. The reason we take iron reflexes is because we also take iron wood, which gives us armor per summon totem. So all of that armor, we stack with the dexterity that we turn into uh, armor from iron reflexes. And we end up with a decent amount of armor. You could put an armor flask on, I don't have one. Um, so I don't really scale it at all, but it still is a, is a nice chunk and it helps against those small fizz hits. As far as uh, the rest of our tree, you really want to go brutal restraint over here and then get percent decks in as many spots as you possibly can. I have three here, here, and here. I take this chunk. It's not super efficient because these other points aren't great, um, but if you can get more than three nodes, do that and then take whatever you need to do it. I path all the way up here for a split personality with Dex and Life. Uh, we have a couple of those. We uh, use the other one here. Point blank, very important. 30% more damage. You just drop all your totems right on top of the boss. The boss spawns in. They get one shot or two shot, depending on if they're uber or regular bosses. And then percent Dex, uh, things like projectile attack damage, um, totem damage over here, an extra totem, damage penetration. Very simple tree. Oh, and I forgot, I forgot something very important. The rest of our, <laughs> the rest of our sentencing points. It, they almost don't matter. The fact that I forgot them is, is very telling because they really almost don't matter. So this one, obviously we talked about Ritual of Awakening. Very, very strong. Uh, Pursuit of Faith, extra totem. 100% uh, totem placement speed is amazing. You saw me spamming them. You can get out a lot really quickly. On top of the totem placement speed, we also take the totem mastery that would give us a 30% chance to summon two totems. In my opinion, when you're doing things like the feared invitation, you don't want to be standing still casting 20 totems in a row. So getting this mastery, even though it's not technically more damage, I think is super, super important. So totem speed, really nice. Plus one totem, fine. Conviction of power is really nice. Just some damage and, uh, and defenses from guaranteed power and endurance charges which means you don't have to generate them which is very nice but nothing crazy and then our fourth ascendancy is so bad that we don't even take one however it is still important that you do uberlap because these two points mana regen 20 percent here mana regen 20 percent here that actually really helps that 40 percent mana regen that really helps keep our mana topped off when we are spamming our totems and, and boss fights uh, and then there's just nothing else that's worth taking brand. You don't want, you don't want 10% mind over matter because then if you get hit while you're using totems, you won't have any mana and then arcane surge, we don't even use. So none of them are worth it. Just take these two points. It's 40% mana regen. It sounds horrible. It's actually really important to get it. All right, let's talk about crafting these boots. So they're actually pretty easy to craft. Uh, the base is about five exalts, at least at the time of this video, it was five exalts. You want to get a pair of boots that is preferably item level 86 if you can get them, but it's not super important because you're going to lose out on the chance of, say, tier one move speed, 35%, which isn't necessary. Um, and then I think tier one resistances are like 84. So you spend as much as you want on the base in order to get the mods that you want to shoot for. So once you have a base with this mod, it doesn't have to be magic. It can be, uh, it could be rare. It could be full suffixes and prefixes. If you can get one with only two suffixes, it'll save you one Eldritch Null. So that's what I did. They were the same price. So I just waited until one came up that had, uh, that had an open suffix and the reason for that is because you want to craft on cannot roll attack modifiers now what this does is prevents your eldritch uh, annuls chaos and exalts from impacting this prefix you can freely roll eldritch chaos on this item with cannot roll attack modifiers and nothing will happen to your damage mod so all right, so I just crafted these boots and didn't hit record, so uh, we're going to start over. But this is a pair of boots that I just made for uh, 26 exalts and 26 eldritch annuls, which is around 8 exalts worth of crafting. Uh, they've got tier 1 life, they've got triple res and move speed, um, but you didn't get to see how I made them, so we're going to do it again. Let's go. All right, let's start over. Create a new item. We're going to get some boots, dex, slink, 86, proceed. So we're going to start with the Sentinel mod of added 
damage per dex. So what you want to do at this point is you want to make these into rare boots. If you have a blue pair of boots, some people sell them like this. If you have a rare pair of boots, that's even better. They're already ready to go. What you want to do is you want to uh, hit them with an AUG, give them a suffix, and hit them with a regal. Now it's got two suffixes. Perfect. So from this point, we are now going to try to work on the prefixes of the item. In order to do that, we need to craft on cannot roll attack modifiers. What this is going to do is this is going to prevent us from affecting our two to four cold damage mod when we are using, using Eldritch Currency. So in order to work on just the prefixes, you want the Searing Exarch to be dominant. Hit it with a Lesser Ember, make sure that the Searing Exarch is dominant, and then you can go to town with your Exalts and Annals. Our prefixes right now, we just have the Dex mod, so we're going to slam it. 15% move speed, not great. What we're looking for here is either really high move speed or really high life. Uh, and then we will craft the other one on. In my opinion, going for both life and move speed is not worth it. It's too many exalts worth of these exalts and annuls. So I don't recommend it. So evasion, not good. Uh, six life, not good. 20 move speed. I... I I waited till I got, ooh, there we go. I waited till I got tier two or better of life or move speed. Okay, so that took five exalts, four nulls. Um, I feel like a little over an exalt. And now your prefixes uh, are ready to be finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and craft on uh, move speed. Tier one, bam. Okay, prefixes are done. We've got tier two life, uh, a decent roll of move speed and uh, cold damage to attacks per 10 dex. Prefixes are complete. So, in order to work on the suffixes, you now want the Eater of Worlds to be dominant. So you need to put on a higher Icker than you have Ember. We put on a greater, and now the Eater of Worlds is dominant. We can go back to our uh, Eldritch Crafting now. Our current suffixes are uh, trash, <laughs> stun and block, and a bad roll of cold. So we're just gonna use an Eldritch Chaos to clear them and start us fresh. Uh, that gave us tier two life regen, not what we want. So we're just gonna annul and then exalt. And basically what we're gonna do now is try to hit high res and high dex. That's all we care about. So low res, we're not gonna roll with that. Spell Suppress, if you get a high roll of Spell Suppress, I actually recommend selling them because our build doesn't use Spell Suppression on any of our gear because Mage Bane caps us no matter what. It's like 150% uh, Spell Suppression just from Mage Bane. So if you get like tier one, two, maybe even three, I would check what the price is and try to sell them. But for us, for the purposes of this crafting video, we are not, we're just gonna roll over them. Um, 22 decks, not not high enough to keep in my opinion. Um, I, I think you should be looking for like tier three or better of resists and decks. Uh, not life regen. Boy, this is this is not a good start. Tier seven. Okay, so tier one lightning. This is really nice. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to exalt again and hope for a second good mod. Tier two chaos. This is incredible. So no matter what we hit on the third suffix, this is gonna be good. Um, it is not mandatory to hit dexterity. It's really nice to hit dexterity, but I wouldn't say it's mandatory. If you wanna roll for it, you can. It just might cost you a little bit more currency. So I think at this point we have our crafted move speed. We don't have space for another crafted mod. So in my opinion, slam it one more time. Not amazing, 20 cold res, but triple res, including chaos res, Tier 2 life, move speed, and the damage mod. These boots are awesome. So then you want to finish off your implicits. Uh, I got action speed and fizz as extra cold. Those are probably two of the best, uh, two of the best that you can get, but it's up to you. As far as cost, this took us uh, 31 total exalts and annuls, and they go for about seven to an exalt, which makes this about a four and a half exalt craft. The base was five exalts. Under 10x, you have these boots. So as far as your crafting is concerned, getting the, the dex uh, rings, the bases are five to eight exalts. You just slam dex essences on them. 
Uh, same thing with the belt. Get the percent dex base, slam essence on it, and then these boots you craft like this. They're gonna cost you anywhere from eight to fifteen exalts, depending on how uh, lucky or unlucky you get, as well as how good you want them to be. Um, I got pretty lucky. I rolled like forty dex on mine uh, and hit some some res. So if you want to go for dex, you can, but not necessary. If you have questions on this build, please leave a comment down below or stop by my Twitch stream. I stream almost every single day at twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. Link is in the description. Come check us out. We have a lot of fun over there and I'll be playing this build more and some other fun stuff. So come hang out. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I really appreciate all you guys. Let me know what other kind of build guides you want to see. Let me know what other kind of videos you want to see down in the comments. I appreciate you so much. And as always, take care.